Welcome to one of the symbol of the city, the Castel Nuovo, how well called the Maschio Angioino, Angevian Castle. The first name was uh, Castel Neve or New Castle and was built when uh, the new French King of Naples, Charles the Angevian family, was on the throne of Naples at the end of the 13th century. There were already two castles, one was Castel Capuano, the other was Castel de Lovo. So the new king, Charles, wanted to have a new residence nearby the sea. But what can we see now? It's the process of many different restorations, many different changes in the architecture, and the actual shape, especially with the beautiful arch in the middle, was made by the Spanish king, Alfonso d'Aragona. The arch in the middle is one of the best examples of the Renaissance art here in Naples, and in the middle, between the two arches, there is the triumphal entrance of the king, Alfonso d'Aragona, to the city of Naples. If we go closer, I want to show you some secrets placed, represented into the gates of this castle. The castle has five towers all around. Uh, four of them are made of piperno, the black grey stone. Only one, to the right corner facing the sea, it's made of tufo. That's called the Golden Tower. One of uh, the several legends around this castle is around uh, and about a crocodile. There was uh, this special crocodile that swimming from Africa, from the Nile, arrived to the city of Naples. And this crocodile was used by the Queen Giovanna to eat all of her lovers. Giovanna was famous for the great passion that she had, not just for the kingdom of Naples, but the real passion with a uh, with man. She had 100 lovers, and what she did, from a small um, bottle, uh, a passage from the, from the underground, from the dungeons of the castle, after she was with them, she uh, gave her lovers to the crocodile. Another legend, is uh, that around the castle there was the water and a drawbridge able to open and close the access to this amazing building. Of course, there was no water even because the shape of the towers are too small and it was easier for the enemies to go inside. That's why that kind of the construction looks like a decoration with the diamonds was perfect to avoid that enemies could go up to the castle. We can see also feritoie, like uh, windows with a cross shape used by with the boats of balestre. So um, the um, the army of the uh, of Naples could check if there were enemies outside. Up to the arch, we can see the Archangel Saint Michael, which is uh, the patron of south of Italy, and then four beaches of the king. While right in the middle. In the beautiful procession between uh, the two arches, we can see the king underneath uh, Baldacchino and uh, musicians, uh, soldiers, knights, and just one lady, one girl. Her name is Lucrezia Dalagno. She was the lover of the king. She was from an area where basically I'm coming from, the area of Vesuvio, Montesumma Vesuvio. The king was so in love for her that he wanted to import from Catalonia a special type of uh, wine, a vineyard, that today we are still making in some towns at the feet of Montezuma, which is uh, nearby the Vesuvius, and it's called Catalanesca. That's represented Plaza Mayor in Madrid. And we are at the entrance of the new castle, inside the courtyard. I'm going to show you now one of the most famous and beautiful rooms of this place. 
the baron's hole where we are it's famous for different things first the architecture of this hole it's something uh, stunning we see right in the middle a star shaped uh, architecture wanted by the king Alfonso d'Aragona where he called a Spanish architect working here who is new kingdom of Naples the bottom holds it's famous for this packet I'm telling now the king Ferrante Alfonso's son he had a problem with the barons with the noble families of Naples and with the excuse of the fake wedding of uh, his nephew he called all of them in this hall when they were inside he closed all the gates and the soldiers from up to the small windows arrested all of them and he buried them alive into the walls of this room that's why one of the legends that sometimes we can still hear somebody knocking to the walls of this place looks like uh, the game of thrones red weddings the lannister weddings after the story of the conspiracy of baron here in Naples, now we are going to see the palatine hall pala sala palatina so this is the entrance of the palatine hall a hall full of stories and 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 the traditions this is the only room where uh, we can still see part of the original architecture of the Angevian time, the French time, under the King Charles. There were also an incredible cycle of frescoes made by Giotto. When Alfonso came and took over the throne of Naples instead of uh, the French families, actually he covered and destroyed all this great cycle of frescoes representing important people, uh, women and men of the past. But it was also in this castle that a pope was made a pope, Bonifacio the Hague. Now we go inside and I want to show you some of the secret and the hidden gems of this place. Part of the fresco of the Middle Age are still around the windows, the huge Gothic windows. Imagine the effects that you can get when uh, the sun is coming through the window in this hall. Now it's used for contemporary art exhibition. Part of uh, the sculptures or uh, pieces of marble are still around the walls. It's more, it's very restored, but you can still feel the great history of this hall. The chapel of Purgatory here at the feet of the castle was linked with the prisons, with the jail of the castle. It was built in the 16th century and uh, maybe it's buried here, Masaniello's brother. Masaniello was the great revolutionary in Naples. And uh, instead to pass with the condemned to death along the courtyard, from the jail they could come straight in this chapel of Purgatory where you can see the source of Purgatory represented in a painting on the main altar. By the sea, in this part of the castle, there was the so-called Fossa del Miglio, where all the grain arrived and was stored, but they were used as a jail. That's the jail of the castle of Naples. And here, the legend of the crocodile that they used to eat, the lovers of the Queen Giovanna. We are at the ground floor of uh, the new castle. Don't forget that the city of Naples changed along the centuries. Now we are about 250 meters from the seaside to the shoreline. But in the Roman time, there was a great villa facing the sea, built on the sea. We can see part of the archaeological foundations of a, a Roman domus, a Roman villa, made with opus reticulatum and a great mosaic. So, the medieval castle built on top of a Roman villa, but it's not finished. If we go inside this other room, we can see part of a cemetery. You will see a cemetery by the seaside. Yes, 
there was a Norman cemetery nearby in this place and the castle built on top. We can still see part of the people buried in this necropolis. Studying the bones and the sites of them, they could understand that they were part of a Norman culture society. Don't forget that before the Angevian and before the Svevi, we had the Norman kings with Roger il Norman. And uh, very interesting, at the end of this hall, we can see the old line, the old limit of the first castle, the Angevian one, the French one. And uh, it's given by this wall. So where I am, it's the limit of uh, the French castle and uh, the color on the other side, it's different from the inside because the salt from the sea eroded part of the structure. And Alfonso d'Aragona built another castle big and larger and uh, on top of the fountain. Now it's better and clearer. Walking to the staircase of this castle, you're ready to reach the top, the terrace of uh, the city of Naples, where in front of you, in the great Bay of Napoli, you can see the Sorrento Peninsula. To the right side, Capri Island and part of Lungomare. The red building, it's the Royal Palace of Naples, and that corner is used for the National Library of the city. So we are literally on top of the world. Please, in that place, in that corner, you can see the Mount Vesuvius. There is a cruise ship because the port of Naples for the cruises lines is right by the city, the historical center, the monumental area. So remember that if you are come on a cruise ship, you can call me and we can do a great tour, walking tour around the main monuments of the city. That's the Golden Tower. <laughs> 